Cogito, ergo, swim? Today on Michael's Toys. We're going to be building a Cartesian diver named after Rene Descartes. It's a very cool thing that you can build at home yourself. You will need enough water to fill a squeezable plastic bottle that has a nice tight fitting lid, four sugar cubes, four paper clips, at least a couple toothpicks, a teaspoon of cinnamon, two different colors of vinyl electrical tape, some transparent tape, an assortment of ketchup packets, a small metal bowl, and a pencil that you have kept in a dish of salt at least overnight. A full list of all of these materials can be found down in the description below. Step one is to uncap our plastic bottle. This will contain the ocean that our Cartesian diver explores. Our diver will be a ketchup packet. Now you could use a packet of any other kind of sauce, mayonnaise perhaps, mustard, but I find that ketchup works the best. Ketchup, mm, it's perfect. So what we're gonna do is squeeze up the little packet of ketchup and insert it into the bottle. Plop, perfect. Now that our diver is in there, let's give it an ocean. I will put the bottle in this little um, bowls, just in case I spill, which I'm sure I will. Let's see if I have enough water. Yeah, perfect, all right. Now make sure the cap goes on very, very tightly. Ugh, perfect. Okay, now, here we go. Let's dry this off and get ready to dive. So our ketchup packet is floating in the bottle, floating up towards the top. But for how long? Watch this. Watch what happens when I squeeze the bottle. Huh. Not so floaty now, are you? But if I stop squeezing, it floats back up to the top. I can not only make it sink, but I can make it stay right where I want it to stay just by applying the right amount of pressure to the bottle. I can send it to the bottom with a strong squeeze and free it to the top by simply loosening my grip. It's enough to make anyone go, oh boy, you see. When an object is immersed in a fluid, whether it be a gas or a liquid, pressure is exerted by that fluid on the object because the object is being bombarded by the molecules that make up that fluid. Now, getting bombarded by a single molecule isn't much, but try getting bombarded by trillions. That could cause a pretty large pressure. But here's the thing, the actual magnitude of the force that comes from being bombarded by a fluid's molecule increases the deeper down that molecule is because of the weight of all the fluid above it. Which means when you're submerged in air or water, the pressure at the bottom of you is greater than the pressure from above. So any collisions that occur top down like this, pushing you down, are weaker in total than all the ones pushing you up. Now the difference is a net force up, and that force is called a buoyant force. But how strong is the buoyant force on an object in a fluid? Well, take a look at this ketchup packet, all right? It is surrounded by water. But if it wasn't in this bottle, what would be in its place? Well, just water. Water would be filling that volume. A volume of water, the exact same size and shape as that ketchup packet would be there. And what would that volume of water be doing? Would it be sinking or floating? No. So there you go. The weight of that parcel of water equal in volume to this packet would be equal and opposite the buoyant force pushing in the other direction. So it would stay where it is and not sink or float. This observation is known as Archimedes' principle. The buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the volume of water it displaces by being in that fluid. In the case of this ketchup packet, the packet has a smaller weight than an equal volume of water. So the buoyant force wins out and the packet floats. But not for long. Because inside almost all sauce packets, there's a little bit of air, and air is much easier to compress than sauce or water. So when I squeeze the bottle, the water pressure inside the bottle goes up, and all the air in that packet compresses. It gets smaller, which means the volume of the packet 
get smaller, but its weight stays the same. So now, all of a sudden, we're talking about a smaller volume with the same weight. That's more dense. Denser things sink. When I release my squeeze, the buoyant force becomes once again stronger than the weight force because the volume of the packet increases, because the air that is right now compressed expands back. The ketchup packet takes up more space, enough space that an equal volume of water would weigh more. Therefore, the buoyant force moves it up. So go ahead and try to build one of these at home and try out different kinds of sauces. I have found that packets of ketchup work the best. I found that soy sauce packets, I've got one right here, they just sink right away. They are too dense. Uh, hot sauce packets from Taco Bell have the opposite problem. They float too well. Put one in, it'll float, and no matter how hard I squeeze, I can't get it to fall. Maybe you're strong enough. Try it out. It's called an experiment. Thank you, science. Um, I find that not all ketchup brands work equally well, though. Uh, I have some, oh yeah, so these Heinz packets, they also float too well. Um, if your packet sinks right away, it might just be on the edge. And if you add some salt to your water, you may be able to get that packet to float because adding the salt increases the buoyant force of the fluid in your bottle. But I gotta tell you, I've made, I've made dozens of these in my life and I always find that ketchup is the safest bet. Watch this. Are you guys watching? Wait, watch it. Hold on, watch this, watch this. And as always, thanks for watching.